Americans for Fair Taxation presents the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation, and recorded by Bob Paxton, a volunteer with the Florida Fair Tax Educational Association. And now, this week's Chairman's Report. Hello, I'm Bob Paxton with the AFFT Chairman's Report for Friday, August 26, 2022. Today's Chairman's Report is guest written by Jade Wally. Jade's a partner in a CPA firm and is on the board of Americans for Fair Taxation. The Fair Tax versus the Income Tax. Continuity versus Chaos. Deep down, something in our humanity strives for steadiness, stability, continuity, and catharsis. Unfortunately, we humans get ourselves into messes so easily, and we often end up with disorder, confusion, bedlam, and disarray. Now, a simple examination of the fair tax as our national system of taxation reveals whether or not this proposed panacea lives up to these lofty but essential human needs. Would the fair tax bring chaos or continuity? Let's take a look. The fair tax would eliminate 75,000 pages of tax law, detailed tax regulations, tax form instructions, and tax court case precedents. The effect there? We'd be responsible only for the Fair Tax Act, a little over 100 pages. The fair tax would eliminate the need for individual, corporate, gift, estate, and other tax returns. Effect? We'll never have to report our income to the IRS again. We'd simply pay the fair tax at the retail checkout be it online or at the cash register. The fair tax would eliminate the IRS. The effect there will never again be persecuted by a taxation system that completely subverts the Bill of Rights. In other words, a system where there's no due process, right to a trial by jury, no free speech, or no self-incrimination protections. The fair tax would eliminate the need to track all of your ancillary income and keep shoeboxes full of receipts. The effect there, our anxiety and level of fear we currently endure would cease to exist. Over 95% of our new tax system's collections would be automatic, with no incremental work, no second guessing, no processing, or illegal evasion. The fair tax would eliminate the payroll tax and all tax withholdings. The effect? We'd keep our entire paycheck. The angst and apprehension associated with bringing home less than what we earn and having to wait a year for a refund of our own money would all evaporate immediately. The fair tax would eliminate an uncompetitive landscape for U.S.-based companies competing abroad. The effect there? U.S. companies would produce goods and services that would have anywhere from 10% to 25% of its historical costs, composed of embedded income and payroll taxes, immediately vanish from its cost buildup, making U.S. companies significantly more competitive on the world stage. The fair tax would eliminate unfair discrimination against our working poor. The effect? The payroll tax is the most regressive portion of our current taxation system, and it would end under the fair tax. The working poor would no longer pay the government before they feed their family. The fair tax's monthly prebate would ensure that all legal residents, including the working poor, would never have to pay the government before they can purchase the basic necessities of life. The fair tax would eliminate 95% of our current trillion dollars worth of annual tax evasion. The effect here? The convoluted nature of the income tax results in unprecedented confusion our treasury would no longer lose out on a trillion dollars a year. Studies show that 95% of illegal evasion would be eliminated under the fair tax. The fair tax widens the tax collection base significantly, including the underground criminal economy, organized crime, prostitution, people illegally residing in the U.S., etc., all of which would pay the fair tax as they consume retail goods, think food and rent, and services. Spending comes from borrowing, savings, income, and maybe even theft, while income only comes from income. The fair tax would eliminate inconsistency in collections during economic cycles such as recessions. The effect? Studies show that U.S. personal consumption expenditures, or PCE, was a steadier and more predictable metric than earned income over multiple decades. This means that during a recession, when both consumption and incomes fall, the PCE that the fair tax collections will be based on will act as a calming and steadying force relative to our current income tax system. Now, this is just the beginning of a list of effects the fair tax would have on our country. 
However, even in brief, we can comfortably say, Your Honor, I rest my case. We can see without question that the fair tax would usher in peace, calm, and an ease of complying with a tax system that we've never experienced before in the United States. This is the continuity, efficiency, simplicity, and fairness that we're all thirsting for. Now, switching gears for a moment. The anticipated doubling of the IRS workforce, which is included within the Inflation Reduction Act, which has now become law, is expected to result in unprecedented and heightened harassment of hardworking American men and women. Add this to the existing malaise of IRS regulations, uncertainty, discombobulation, disorder, confusion, and chaos that is our current income tax system, and it's questionable whether or not our country can handle any more. Now, no matter what your faith, the Bible is a useful tool for instruction and training. As Theodore Roosevelt said, a thorough knowledge of the Bible is worth more than a college education. Now, here are a few points from the Bible on the matter of confusion. 1 Corinthians 14.33 For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. 2 Timothy 4, 3 and 4 A time will come when people will not listen to accurate teachings. Instead, they will follow their own desires and surround themselves with teachers who tell them what they want to hear. People will refuse to listen to the truth and turn to myths. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Based on this small sampling of Bible verses above, as well as knowing this truth in the depth of our soul, everyone can agree that peace, continuity, and calm are better than confusion, chaos, fear, and disorder. The fair tax wins the title hands down for being effortless, easy, and without controversy, while our current income tax system drags us further and further into the bowels of a trillion dollars worth of annual tax evasion, increased confusion, an increased fear of IRS persecution, and ultimately destruction. So, what's your choice? Well, what can each of us do? We can write letters and make calls to our elected representatives demanding that if the government really wants to eliminate the burden of filing income tax returns, they should enact the fair tax and do away with tax returns altogether. The great 18th century Irish statesman Edmund Burke made a statement that applies in many ways. Nobody made a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could only do a little. Take back control. Help us pass the fair tax. The IRS will be gone and will pay our taxes when we make purchases. We, not the ruling class and their minions in D.C., will decide how much federal tax we pay. If you have friends who don't know about the fair tax, send them to fairtax.org. Have them watch the whiteboards under how it works, and if they agree, ask them to please join us. Then, contact your members of Congress and the President and demand that Congress pass the fair tax. The only truly fair tax. This has been the Weekly Chairman's Report, written by Steve Hayes, President of Americans for Fair Taxation. Check back every week for news and information about the fair tax and learn why the fair tax should replace our antiquated federal income tax system. If you'd like to receive a copy of the Chairman's Report in your inbox every week, sign up at fairtax.org. 